So yes, this young boy presented the difficulty of walking. So yes, let's start with the examination findings here. So if you look very, very closely with this gentleman, a young boy, so this is very important. We can see the thigh muscles, as well as the thigh muscles are here, having some of the wasted here. But you see that the calf muscles having wasted more and more. So this is basically the bilateral, I'm saying, the symmetrical, distal, wasting. Predominantly, you see the distal muscles are wasting here. You see the guttering here. You see the guttering here. And you see that here is the distal muscle wasted. You see the wasted, wasted muscles. And the calf muscles is typically wasted, wasted. And he, here you see the thigh muscles having preserved. There is also some of the wasting here. But preserved thigh muscles here. Along with that, what are the findings that we are looking for? In this patient that we are looking for wasting, and definitely the weakness. Should be the weakness, we will examine the weakness. And we are looking for some of the fasciculation to differentiate from other cases. So let's see some of the fasciculation. So fasciculations are absent. So what I'm saying, my is very much important is spot diagnosis that we need to say. What I'm saying, just listen in a single sentence by the single sentence. Symmetrical, say with me, symmetrical. Symmetrical. Bilateral. Bilateral. Predominantly. Distal. Distal. Wasting. Wasting. And weakness. And weakness. Especially the peroneal group of muscles wasting and weakness. Along with the pre preserved the thigh muscles. Along with the bilateral pescavus, you see the bilateral pescavus. Can you give me the? So this is very important. So this is the thigh, normal thigh. So this is a normal person leg. So we don't really preserve the thigh muscles. If these muscles is lost. So these will be something like that. And there is a pace cavus giving an inverted champagne bottle. So this is a spot diagnosis of the Charcot Merito disease, or we call the HSMN type 1. Hereditary sensory metal neuron disease type 1. So immediately after that, you need to confirm the three important questions that what type of condition. What is the lesion and why is the lesion? So what type of the lesion you already got the answers. I say the law of the type of weakness equal to W and F. So wasting and weakness. We got the wasting weakness, so definitely the law of the One thing is definitely the most common the disease happened in medicine. Here's the peripheral nerves, here's the peripheral neuroma. Because the law of starts from the spinal cord and the tumonsil and the nerve roof and goes to the peripheral nerves and here's the neuromuscular dancer the muscles as well. So what I'm saying what are the levels of relation that peripheral nerves? And why the disease is happening? This typical disease happens in a sharp or peripheral disease. And the kind of the name of the disease is the peroneal muscular atrophy, sometimes we are saying. So yes, the typical peroneal muscular atrophy. In that case, we can show that yes, the lower motor neuron along with the sound of the high reflection, you can see. So the reflexes are absent. After cleansing, then you need to say the absent. Otherwise, you need to say the reflexes. The anchor reflex is here. So once again, anchor reflexes are absent. Along with the bilateral pescavus. So my dear, I'd like to talk more. In that case, that sometimes you're getting here, some of the thickened nerves, some of the thickened nerves. So this is the common peroneal nerve, the bilateral thickened, and the findings, they have found. Sometimes some of the people are taking some of the nerve biopsies to see What's going on in this gentleman? Yeah. So the summary talk is that Sharkut Manito disease or H7 type 1 is a predominantly motor neuron. So once again, say with me, bilateral symmetric, predominantly distal, wasting and weakness, especially peroneal muscles, with preserving the thigh muscles, with bilateral pescaras, giving an inverted champagne bottle. <coughs> Champagne bottle appearances. This is called the sharp of diagnosis. With the deep tendon reflexes, will be reduced. 
with with or without some of the bilateral thickened nerves, the common pelvic nerves. Immediately after that, you can see that he has gone into motion. Then a half step up. Then a half. Yes, are close, 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 close. Too very close. So see, my dear, this is very important. In the upper limbs, you see the guttering, guttering of the fingers, guttering of the fingers, and also you see the space in between the thumb as well as the index finger. This area, I say, if this is lost, means the loss of muscles. This is called the wash. I say the wash, washing with the small muscle of the hands, with the sound of the clawed hands. So once again, this is also bilateral, symmetrical, predominantly distal, washing of the small muscle of the hands, with the bilateral clawed hands, with the deep tendon reflex of the deep breast, with some of the predominant or some of the preservation of the proximal muscles as well. This is one thing in the sharper bend of the case. Sometimes here also we are getting the sound of nerves, thickened nerves, then the ulnar nerves thickening is also at the fine. So you turn round, this is called the HSMN. So you tell the examiner, yes, my clinical diagnosis of this young boy. Once again, the normal motor neuron, the type of the witness, the type of the lesion. Second, Yes, the lesion is in the peripheral nerves, the peripheral neurobite, which is the predominant motor neurobite. My first differential diagnosis, the most likely diagnosis, is the HSML type 1, say that. The name is the shock of mental disease, and the name once again, peroneal muscular atrophy. Why? Because of evidence by bilateral, symmetrical, distal, wasting, weakness, predominantly, or especially the peroneal group of muscles, with preserving the prime muscles giving an inverted champagne both on the appearances. And with or without bilateral thickened nerves, common parent nerves. So yes, my clinical diagnosis, the most like diagnosis is the HSMN type. But it can be other differential diagnosis. It can be AIDP, it can be CIDP, it can be once again the multifocal motor neuropathy conduction. And other causes of motor neuropathy. But I'd like to examine this, investigate this problem. I'd like to do the MCS, nerve conductions, that will give the right answer. Then show the demyelinating polynomial. So demyelinations will give the proof to this, the demyelinating polynomial, which is excellent time. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.